This is meteorologist Mark Molnar. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. As always, we're going to take a look at the major winter storm going on here. As we always do, we're going to cover that big storm that's going from the southern plains all the way up into the northeast. And we're going to see exactly what's going to happen. We have a major ice storm component that's really concerning on this system. And we have the major snow to the north. And we've got flooding rains across the southeast. So without wasting any more time, we're just going to barrel right into it. Don't forget to subscribe, bell button. There is question or comment section. I love to read your questions or comments. And guess what? There are timestamps down below if you wish to skip ahead. Let's get right into it. All right, taking a look at my impact, storm impact scale from 1 to 5, 1 to slight, and 5 to extreme. Look at this. Extreme snowfall totals here across upstate New York into New England, and I'll show you those totals both on my forecast and the models and explain what's going on. These other areas, this extreme in northeast Pennsylvania, and then the Ohio River Valley and Mississippi River Valley and along and east of that, we'll be seeing extreme amount of freezing rain, and there is that area of large expanses of snow, even winter storm problems all the way down into texas let's take a look all right take a look at snowfall totals in the northeast i'll get to the big picture here shortly with the models and even areas further south and west here but taking a look at a widespread area 12 to 18 inches from erie buffalo syracuse all the way up into northern new england here 12 to 18 inches probably around 8 to 12 inches here around the northern part of binghamton southern tier of new upstate new york into northwest pennsylvania and into uh, northern and central New England here. Now, as we get into the darker blue shading here, around three to six inches here across northern uh, extreme north central Pennsylvania into the parts of the Hudson Valley in northern Massachusetts here. And then look at this outside of this area. You're going to see a lot more mixing and freezing rain. And I'm going to explain exactly what's going on here. Albany will probably get right around five, six, seven inches south of you. A lot more ice. So we're going to get into ice totals here as well in the models as to why this is happening. All right, taking a look at ice totals here across the northeast. I'm going to get to the southern branch of this system as well. But we're taking a look. Your eyes are drawn to the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area, Endless Mountain region area around Wyoming County. Take a look at some of these ice totals here. Binghamton, you'll be breathing a little bit of sigh of relief as you're not going to get quite into these horrible ice totals. But a devastating ice storm looks likely around the hills of Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and Endless Mountain region of northeast Pennsylvania uh, later Thursday into Friday here. So we could be looking at anywhere from about a third of an inch of ice all the way up to three quarters of an inch of ice here, depending on your elevation and location here. So uh, persistent freezing rain likely. Binghamton area, I think you'll get off a little easy, although a, t a tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice is definitely enough to cause problems. Southwest of Pittsburgh, also up to a third to a half an inch of ice. And the lower Hudson Valley, some of the higher terrain here uh, in the southern Catskills also and western Massachusetts up to a third to a quarter inch, uh, especially up to a half an inch. And some of those higher elevations, let's get into the models as to why this is happening. All right, let's take a look at snowfall totals here, starting off with the northeast, and then I'll get to the southern part of the system. Take a look at snow totals. The Euro, the latest one coming in a little bit further south here. This one's a bit further south than it was before, uh, getting into some 12, 13-inch uh, totals up here in Potter County, Tioga County, Pennsylvania even McKean County. And then look at this, right around 10 inches in Binghamton, right around, wow, 8 inches in Albany. But look at that, 15 inches northwest and northeast to Albany, 14 inches. And a little bit lesser totals here to the north. We'll see. have to see if that trend continues. Uh, but here, big totals here. Uh, we're just north of the rain-snow line. Let's see if the uh, GFS is showing anything different than it has been the last 24 hours. Not really. In fact, well, it's actually bringing a little bit of the heavier snow a little bit further to the south and to the east again. So we'll see some of these areas start to maybe fill in. Look at that, 14, 15 inches in Elmira, 16 inches in Bradford, Ithaca 15 inches, right around 10 inches again in Binghamton, five, 6 inches in Albany. But look at that, northwest to Albany 18, 20 inches here in Vermont, Portland right around that, wow, it varies quite a bit, 11 inches, 14 inches so these areas, some of these areas, Cleveland, 11 inches. This is really interesting. So the colder solutions seem to be winning out here. I'll show you the NAM three kilometer. Here we go. So we get it. Let's see the zero Z it is in, but it's not as like uh, 
we can't really see too far into the future. Of course, it is further north, as it always has been, basically giving Binghamton zero. I'm not so, not sure on this solution here. That's just not working for me. Uh, there's too much warm air pushing to the northeast and north of this frontal boundary of the NAM. I'm not sure. The NAM is definitely overdoing. And, and uh, let me quickly show you exactly what it's overdoing here. It's overdoing freezing rain to an extent here. Uh, it's back to giving uh, Binghamton, New York, a half an inch of freezing rain here. So in endless mountain regions, 1.44 inches. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of these totals will be on the real high end. But I do think it's pushing the freezing rain a little bit too far to the north here. Definitely agree there's going to be a problem here around, around Wilkes-Barre Scranton. So let's get into the high resolution Euro here. And I'll explain exactly what's going on here. There we go. This is probably a really good solution. This is really bad down in here. Through parts of Ohio and into parts of... Not so sure we're going to see this kind of ice here, but definitely here in northeast Pennsylvania and then parts of the Catskills and Hudson Valley region, these higher elevations around this area and into central New England. Definitely want to watch northeast Pennsylvania here, the endless mountain region. Look at this, 0.85 inches of ice. This is could cause some major power disruptions. Trees and power lines with these kind of ice totals are not good so there you have it this is uh getting into some heavy ice and is the gfs really in agreement with this well let's take a look take a look at the latest gfs and here we go yes it's a uh, pretty big of a mess here look at some of these hills around look at that 1.29 inches of the hilltop around wilkes Barre, scranton 0.75 inches endless mountain region three quarters of an inch this back in through here like I said, I think there's going to be too much warm air winning out here in this part of the Susquehanna River Valley and then back towards the Laurel Highlands. I don't think we're going to be seeing this kind of uh, tremendous amount of ice here. But look at this down and through the Ohio River Valley. That there is not good news. All right. So let's start off with the GFS surface map. We're just going with the northeast right now and I'll transition to other parts of the country because this is a very big storm. So let's get into the GFS here. This is during the day on Thursday. Uh, you can see we play this into motion for your Monday. You still see a lot of rain, the rain and snow line. This model is doing pretty good with the rain and snow line, I think, here. So we just have rain and snow, maybe pockets of sleet and freezing rain here, and then sleet back in through parts of Ohio. And all snow, places like Cleveland, Erie, Buffalo, Syracuse, and the Adirondacks. But this is where the problem starts. If we, let's take, let's back this up here. We put this into motion for the afternoon, early to mid-afternoon. We start to get this mix here. And that this is the frontal boundary is going to be slipping slowly to the south and east here. And colder air is going to be undercutting this. So you're still going to have that warm nose of air into places like Binghamton, over towards uh, St. Mary's, uh, Pittsburgh, and down into parts of southern Ohio here. So we put this into motion. And the intensity of this snowfall across western Pennsylvania into northern Ohio intensifies. And look at this heavy ice here, especially the fuchsia colors here. This is mostly sleet in the purple, so you'll have a sleet storm really developing into parts of Ohio. But look at the freezing rain really breaking out across parts of southern Ohio and into western Pennsylvania and over by the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area, just north and west. And Binghamton looking sleet at this point, but we head into... The evening hours, and look at this. The cold air intensifies. This is probably good news, this scenario for Binghamton, because we get colder quicker. It keeps us out of this freezing rain. But Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, and the hilltops around, this is prob problematic here. And into the mid-Hudson Valley and extending east here into the uh, New England area. But you see this heavy snow band intensifying. Where that sleet line is with the snow, that's where the heaviest snow band is going to lie. So places like Elmira, Glens Falls, up into parts of uh, northern um, New Hampshire there. So we get to the next frame here. Take a look at this. We have sleet continuing here. Places around Binghamton, the early morning hours, heavy rain breaking out in eastern Pennsylvania, but the ice is continuing across the Poconos, the Catskills, and the mid-Hudson Valley region here. Snow continuing, but winding down a little bit over towards Ohio. And you can see we start to get this heavy snow socked in. This is right around sunrise, so you're commuting to work or school. 
Maybe there won't be any school, but for that matter, you're seeing some heavy snow here in places like the upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York. Heavy sleet finally transitioning here in Wilkes-Barre Scranton as the freezing rain continues to slowly press to the east. And you see that cold air really bleeding southward here. We'll start to change over to sleet freezing rain mix here even maybe as far south as New York City and Harrisburg and Boston here by the time um, this is uh, heading into the late morning hours and we head into the early afternoon and look at this this is just a total mess as we get snowfall starting to taper off around 1 or 2 p.m. here in places like Binghamton and Albany and it's pretty much completely out of here um, by the time of the evening time. So if you have any plans, maybe if things are cleared off enough, you'll get out and enjoy. So let's get over to the Euro, high resolution Euro. You can see most of the night, Thursday night, it stays rain across all these regions. It's snow back into parts of Ohio and Western. Oh, we skipped ahead there. Let's do this. So we head into the, here we go, the early morning hours of Friday morning. You see this really getting going here across upstate New York into parts of northeast Pennsylvania. The heavy ice continuing here the early morning hours of Friday. Um, the Euro is a bit more progressive with the um, snowfall uh, diving south and east here. So heavy ice, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton down to finally changing over to snow here, places like Pittsburgh. Just around sunrise here, the snow is really breaking out here Friday morning. Um, Binghamton area up to Albany and Glens Falls and over towards Maine here, Portland, Maine. So this, the access of the heavy snow, it continues to move east here. We still have this freezing rain problem across eastern Pennsylvania. This is what I'm really worried about here. Um, you can deal with snow, but ice, especially accumulating on the trees and power lines here, eastern Pennsylvania into the Hudson Valley region, and we extend this east the Euro has things kind of lingering a bit into early afternoon, so we don't start to get some of these snow showers and mixed precipitation out of the area until basically almost just before midnight on Friday night. So uh, let's take a look at the NAM 3 kilometer real quick here. So we put this, this is basically simulated radar at this point with the NAM. So we put this into motion Sunday, or yeah, Sunday, whatever. Uh, Thursday night here, we get into uh, rain showers across eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, into western New York. And there's the rain snow line diving southward here just around sunrise. So this is interesting. The NAM is not bringing the front through as progressively as the Euro and the GFS and the other model suites are. So look at this. We still have rain uh, right around Thursday here. So... We're getting into later Thursday. We still socked in with rain. And then we start to transition over to that rain-snow mix, freezing rain mix here in northwest Pennsylvania. This is early to mid-afternoon. We finally get into the icing. And the dam has a lot more icing further north. Look at this. Wilkes-Barre is still in the rain. This is after sunset for the most part, uh, Thursday night here. So... We're still socked in with rain, according to the NAM. I'm not totally in agreement with this. This is, we basically have a freezing rainstorm between Binghamton and Wilkes-Barre here and over towards Dubois, Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh and Southern. I do agree with the Southern Ohio is going to be a problem. But look at this. We finally get, finally some cold air starts working in just before sunrise here into Wilkes-Barre, according to the NAM. And we still have heavy snow breaking out for the morning commute, but it just doesn't seem as heavy in this corridor as the other models are picking up on with the NAM. So the NAM is just, it seems to be lagging, although we do see a little bit snow lingering a little bit into the afternoon. So that is a bit curious here. The NAM seems to be slower with everything here, and it almost seems to be developing a low pressure here. So we'll have to watch that. Not going to completely discount this model, but, you know, it's one of those things we have to watch for. And with it's not really agreeing with all the other models that we seem to have here. And I just want to show you this. This is a real curious thing to look at. The National Weather Service does a blend of all the models for snowfall. And this is what we come up with. Um, this is interesting because... You know, the NAM is going to drag a lot of these cities down, like Binghamton, six inches, which is a little bit low, I think, six inches around Albany. Um, these ones on the southern end are a bit low. 
Um, but here across the north, we do have that very big stripe of snow, which I think will be higher than this. And I'll, sh you know, that's that's the reality of that. But that's the blend of the M National Weather Service, all the models. We take the freezing rain. Here it is. This is pretty interesting. So um, this brings a little bit more sanity to the region here as far as ice and here across southern Ohio as well. So anywhere from a tenth to a quarter inch with those locally higher amounts up to a half an inch in those higher elevations. All right, so we're going to take a look at the southern end of this system. So we're getting in back into parts of the lower Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, the Mississippi River Valley. So let's put this into motion. This is for your NAM 3 kilometer. And here it is. We're starting off with the first wave. As I said, this is waves of low pressure that are riding along this stalled out stationary front. So that first wave is up here in Ohio, western Pennsylvania. You get mostly rain with this and snow in Cleveland. And then look at this. This is by about the early morning hours of Thursday. You see how this all starts to fill in? This is with that next area of low pressure. And we're going to be having some freezing rain and sleep problems here across much of Arkansas, especially into Oklahoma and northeast Texas here as well. And that's extending northward up into parts of southern Indiana and Ohio here. So we put this further into motion here. Big sleet storm here. Hopefully this stays mostly sleet and not freezing rain. You can see this heavy freezing rain moving across uh, Arkansas here, western Tennessee. Um, this is not good news here. Heavy freezing rain up into southern Ohio. Look at this. We start to wash it out a little bit. So we start to end it right around noon, 1 p.m. here. But we're strengthening that low pressure. Here it is. We even have some convectum components here with some showers and thunderstorm activity on the southern end here. So you see some of these sills could get a little bit strong here with some wind and hail as well. So we put this further into motion and look at this. Most of the moisture by this point, um, this is late evening, right around after sunset here. And look at this, we're getting into like 7, 8 p.m. time frame and heavy freezing rain across eastern Ohio. Look at this heavy snow extending southward here. We still have some snow breaking out here across eastern Oklahoma as well. We put this further into motion, lows just chugging right along here showers and thunderstorms south of it some of these could contain strong winds and some hail and take a look at this freezing rain continuing up into parts of western west virginia kentucky not good news here and freezing rain all the way down into mississippi here so look at this this takes all night friday there's the sunrise friday morning we're still dealing with wintry precipitation here uh, so that was the simulated radar on the NAM 3 kilometer. Let's go over to the Euro high resolution. We're going to start off with, of course, Thursday night here. Look at this. Look how this fills in across northern Arkansas. This Euro is showing a bit more freezing rain for you in Arkansas. This is bad news right around Little Rock. And look at this over into parts of Oklahoma and southern Missouri here, northwestern Arkansas. This is where the heavy snow starts to really break out and really intensifies here across Ohio. This is right around uh, noon hour on Thursday, and it intensifies here. Look at this, eastern Kentucky, southern Ohio, and just west of Pittsburgh here. This is where the heavy freezing rain could lie at this point. Low pressure, there's all that convection down. Could see some flooding concerns here and some severe weather concerns down into parts of Georgia and Alabama as well so there's snow continuing across southern ohio as this freezing rain switched over to snow as i've said before this is a bad scenario because colder air will be filtering in after the freezing rain so you won't have a chance to melt that freezing rain this is a bad bad scenario setting up here low pressure heads to the east and this is by about the time late friday so let's get into the gfs here let me show you the gfs really quickly here there we go. So we put this into Thursday morning here. Look at this heavy freezing rain breaking out across parts. This is a little bit colder, even for Texas here. Look at this. Just northeast of Dallas down here. Arkansas, we have some strong thunderstorms developing on the south side of this. Oh, what happened here? Here we go. Let's back this up. And here we go. We start off with the right around the noon hour. This is for your Thursday. Look at this intensifying low pressure system. This is troubling here. All this freezing rain, very heavy freezing rain, eastern Arkansas, western Tennessee, and right through the heart of Kentucky here and into southern Ohio. This is the problem here. All this warm nose of air at mid-levels overriding that cold bleeding surface air bleeding down from the north. Cold pull of air. And there it is for your Friday night, 
We head in right around the midnight time frame. We're still dealing with it here back into Kentucky. Finally switching over to some light snow here in southern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. As we head towards the morning commute, we're still dealing with problems here. Although it will be a bit lighter, to say the least. So... Let's get into snowfall and ice amounts. All right, let's start off with ice accumulations down and through the Ohio Valley and the mid-Mississippi River Valley. So the southern component of the system is pretty intense here. You can see the GFS is showing significant icing here. Um, this is troubling, especially along the Mississippi River Valley, Ohio River Valley. It's kind of following this contour here as this warm air aloft is overriding. We're seeing, we're going to see totals. This is crazy. Some of these totals well over an inch of ice. Now, freezing rain can typically be overdone on model data, um, especially with what's going on at the surface. So definitely looking at an average of four to six tenths of an inch of ice with locally higher amounts to three quarters of an inch. Some areas will get upwards of an inch, however. And if we go over to the high resolution uh, GFS, or not the GFS, the Euro here. So let's take a look at the high resolution Euro. Take a look at this. Very similar to the GFS. It's not following as contour like. It's a little bit further to the south of the Ohio and the Mississippi River here. But take a look at this. We still have the general idea. Three quarters of an inch of ice. Locally higher amounts here. This is a lot of ice. Down and through Arkansas as well. That's a worst case scenario for Arkansas. Stretching down into northeast Texas here and into southwestern Pennsylvania. And the NAM. Here is the NAM. The NAM is always very, very big on ice. Let's take a look at the latest one, however. We got a later one in here. Let's take a look for it to load. When you get ice accumulations like this, 1.3, 1. 1. This is a crazy amount of ice. Kentucky, we're dealing with it again here in Kentucky with heavy ice. Eastern Arkansas, right along the Mississippi River uh, here in Tennessee. Look at this down and through parts of east, southeastern Oklahoma. In northeast Texas all the way up into Pennsylvania here but it, the big ice here is definitely in through Kentucky southern Ohio eastern Arkansas there it is that is a crazy amount of ice and if we get to the snowfall totals let's just get into those right here uh, with the NAM NAM is a little bit oh the NAM has filled it in since last uh, model run so that is interesting we still have a good six to ten inch snowfall amounts I believe here on the back side of this storm and then it really starts getting picking up here the nam's finally picking up on the 12 inch plus up here in northeastern ohio northwestern pennsylvania and then we have later amounts closer to the mississippi river and ohio river if we take a look at the gfs take a look at this gfs is a bit more pronounced let's not go too far because we'll get into the next storm here let's back this up yeah there is a next storm next week that's going to be for the next segment here um, next video because we have a lot to fit into this video. This is a big storm, isn't it? Take a look at all these snowfall totals right around the 12 inch mark up here into Ohio and Northwest Pennsylvania, and then stretching down eight to 10 inches here across the upper Mississippi Valley here, just North of the Mississippi here. Take a look at, um, here we go, the Euro for snowfall. There you have it. A widespread 6 to 10 inches, locally higher, a foot or more. So nice accumulations northwest of all this ice. You're lucky if you're getting the snow because the ice is just terrible. All right, taking a look at Brad from Ontario, Canada. Continuing snow squalls. This was back on January 9th. Take a look at those snow squalls across the area. Look at that snow piled up there in Ontario, Canada. Nice captures there, Brad. All right, Brandon from Island Heights by Tom's River, New Jersey. A Jersey shore dumping here. It sure is 16 to 21 inches in the general Ocean County area. Take a look at this. The storm outperformed in this area. Look at these photos here. Snow really piled up really fast across the area. And as you can see, things were pretty well at a standstill uh, this past weekend, uh, right around January uh Late the 28th, that came in that evening, the 29th, and here's the next day into the January 30th, Sunday the 30th. Take a look at this. As the sun was beating down on the snow, you had quite a bit of snow removal going on across the area. Nice photos here, Brandon. And here we go. This past weekend storm also, Jim from 
The blizzard of 22, that's basically what it was. Southern Rhode Island. Take a look at some of these whiteout conditions across the area. Nice captures here. Uh, as you can see, we put these into motion here. Um, we have quite a bit in the way of snow activity. Wind, you can see the trees blowing there in the background as well. Nice captures there, Jim. You can also see the blowing and drifting of the snow that was occurring. It doesn't stay in one spot, that is for sure. There we go, Southern Rhode Island, blizzard of 22. Nice captures there, Jim. And here we go, John, from the Islip, New York area, the blizzard of 22. Look at that. Basically, measuring snow with a meter stick, so to speak, here. Look at all of this snow. Uh, it's basically on the 29th of January here this past weekend. So look at all of that snow that fell across the area. Blizzard conditions were felt. And as we put this in, look at the road out there. Barely, barely noticeable. And we put that into motion there. Look at all this blowing and drifting snow here right in the front part of the photo. Nice captures there. John from the Islip, New York area. And my extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton, Upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York, northeast Pennsylvania. This is mainly for Binghamton and right along the New York-Pennsylvania border because Scranton's going to get much more ice, less snow. Take a look at Thursday. We're taking a look at Thursday, Thursday night, and Friday. The storm comes in, starts as rain Thursday, transitions to snow sleet, and freezing rain by the afternoon, up to an inch of snow and sleet, and freezing rain and sleet back to snow overnight Thursday night, six inches of snow and sleet, up to two-tenths of an inch of ice, and then Friday we have snow mixing with some freezing rain, up to three inches of snow and a tenth of an inch of ice before ending early afternoon right around 1 or 2 p.m. Look at that. We'll have temperatures falling uh, Thursday night into the teens and 20s on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, sunny skies, negative 8 for a low on Sunday. Look at that. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. As always, give my Facebook page some love. It's Meteo Mark. It's also Weather Northeastern. And it's also Twitter at Weather Eastern. You can visit me at MediaMark.com, WeatherNorthEastern.com. Question or comment down below. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the bell button so you're alerted when I come up with one of these videos. Thank you for joining me.